On the edit page in the source viewer at the top right corner, if we click the three dots, it's going to review a slew of features that we can use to help us preview and review the raw footage in the media pool. Now let's look at game viewers first. So right now we have two clips in the viewers, both have uh, 30 frames uh, per second. And in most cases, you can review or look at uh, clips in the source viewer or your raw footage independently of uh, the clip that's in the timeline. They will have no influence on each other whatsoever. But if we were to turn on game viewers, what you will notice is that now the playheads are moving in sync with each other. They are moving exactly at the same pace. So this is one of the biggest characteristics of game viewers. So one thing we can do, for example, is to place an endpoint in the source viewer and then an endpoint in the timeline. Now let's also do the same for uh, the out points. And now what we can do is to bring this section of the source clip into the timeline and place it uh, directly on top of this clip or uh, replace it because they are the exact same length. So it can be great for this type of editing. Now, earlier we saw that uh, we have a clip that's 30 frames per second, but if we were to use, let's say, another clip that is 60 frames per second, and we were to repeat basically the same process, uh, now what you will notice is that when we bring this source clip into the timeline, it will only take up about half the space. It's because of the difference in uh, frames per second. So this is something to keep in mind when using game viewers. The next thing we're gonna look at is something called live media preview. So let's go ahead and turn that on. And when we do that, you will notice when we hover over any raw footage in the media pool, it will immediately review it in the source viewer. It can be extremely helpful if you have a lot of raw footage to review and you want to review it fast. So uh, it can be very beneficial uh, for that uh, purpose. The next thing we're going to look at is something called show all video frames, which is turned on by default in the menu. So what this means is that when we start to play the source clip in the viewer, uh, if let's say due to some performance reasons, it starts to get very laggy and you start to experience extremely slow performance. Now it's going to prioritize the playback of each video frames as opposed to audio. So if you turn it off, then it's going to prioritize audio instead of or playback of audio instead of each video frame so that's what this is used for okay moving on let's look at something called show zoomed audio waveform so if we we're to turn that on you will notice that first of all the audio waveform of the clip is going to show up at the bottom of the source clip and it will always show the audio waveform where the playhead is so this is uh, as opposed to, let's say, if we were to turn on show full clip audio waveform, you will see that now it doesn't matter where your playhead is, uh, you will always have the entire audio waveform of that source clip. So you will get a holistic view at all times. Uh, so this is a key difference between these two features. And at any moment, you have the ability to come to the menu and clear the source clip uh, that you see here in the source viewer by clicking clear recently viewed clip. Now you will just get this great background. And this is not a command that you can turn on and off. You simply click it to execute the command. And lastly, another feature that's always turned on is called show marker overlays. Now, what that means is that if we were to go ahead and set up uh, markers in the uh, source clip, you will see that each time you do that, the overlay immediately appears. And let's say whenever the playhead intersects that uh, marker, the overlay will always show up in the viewer. Now, if we were to turn this off, now you will see that the overlay is no longer showing up in the source viewer. So it can be less distracting or less helpful depending on your perspective. Another feature is something called markers. Uh, this will allow us to see, first of all, how many markers we have, what they are, and also it can allow us to easily jump to that particular marker uh, immediately. All right, guys, so this is it for this tutorial. I hope this helps, and as always, I will see you next time.